Hello everyone, I am Joseph Adrian Buen Salido, Head of the Infection Prevention and Control Unit of the Asian Hospital and Medical Center. I am here today to answer questions about the COVID-19 vaccine. So the first question, are the COVID-19 vaccines safe and effective? Yes, they are. The leading vaccine candidates have phase three trials. So let me, let me discuss a little bit on how we are able to ascertain that our vaccine candidates are safe and effective. So vaccine candidates go through three phases of trials. Phase one, uh, we, they are enrolling around 100 patients to see if uh, initial data will show that that vaccine candidate is safe and effective. Then if they pass, they go to phase two trials, wherein they enroll um, hundreds uh, of patients, no? still looking at uh, safety. And number two, looking if uh, these hundreds of patients react well to the vaccines. Now, if this vaccine candidate um, passes the phase two trials, it now goes to the phase three trials. No? And phase three trials will enroll thousands, hundreds to thousands of, uh, of um, patients or participants. And these are not just the healthy people, uh, they may include healthy but with uh, medical conditions, okay? And um, these patients will again undergo testing on whether the vaccines are safe, whether the vaccines are efficacious or if they work in the trials. No? And uh, right now, we are able to say that the leading candidates are safe and effective because we ha already have a number of vaccine candidates who have had phase three trial data. And some of these already have published data, meaning external experts, persons who were not, um, not included or not involved in the trials, looked at the data, and these are experts, and they looked and uh, found out that these data are indeed accurate. Accurate that they are safe and that they are uh, efficacious or they work. Uh, also, um, there are many FDAs in, the, in different countries in the world and many FDAs including our FDAs uh, will definitely before they authorize a vaccine look into the safety again and the efficacy of vaccines. No? And therefore, if our FDA um, authorizes a vaccine to be safe and effective and lastly if the benefits outweigh the risks then definitely that is a good vaccine candidate and we should all uh, get in line uh, to be vaccinated so number two how do vaccines prevent disease um, vaccines are, are actually a way of training our immune system um, to get to know and to get ready uh, to fight a new enemy. And our new enemy these days is COVID-19, particularly the virus called SARS-CoV-2. Uh, vaccines um, will show our immune system who the enemy is so that our immune systems, our soldiers, can prepare to fight that virus if ever that virus tries to come near us. Okay, So that's how vaccines work. How do vaccines differ? That's the next question. Um, there are many types of vaccines. There is a protein type of vaccine wherein uh, the vaccine carries in itself a piece of a, of a virus, a dead virus. Just a piece, for example, just the head of, a, of the enemy, for example. And it shows our soldiers, this is how our enemy looks like. This is the one that you will kill if it comes near us. So that's a protein vaccine. There is also a, a viral vector vaccine wherein uh, the vaccine uses a harmless virus who introduces and carries a piece of, the, of the, uh, the enemy and shows our immune system, our soldiers, kill this guy. And the last uh, type of vaccine is the newest type these are include, included in this type are the mRNA vaccines and what these vaccines show to the soldiers is the blueprint 
the blueprint of how to make uh, a, a picture or a, a, um, an illustration of what the enemy looks like. So the last type of vaccine does not have a, a killed or a weak virus. It just shows the blueprint. And the blueprint is what the soldiers of our body, our immune system, look at. And that is how they, they figure out, oh, this is the enemy. This is who will attack when they come near us. Next question is, why do we need to get vaccinated for COVID-19? We are presently in a pandemic, um, and it's a, it's a big problem. No? It's spreading because uh, the coronavirus is, is very good at jumping from one person to the next. We are doing a lot of uh, precautions already, but the pandemic is still ongoing. How can we prevent it? How can we stop this pandemic? The only way we can do it is if we get at least 75% of people immunized or at least uh, immune to a um, coronavirus infection. When that happens, that is called herd immunity. And herd immunity will disallow the virus um, warm bodies, meaning the virus will, um, will eventually reach a dead end. It will, if there are so many people who are immune now to the, to the virus because of vaccination, um, the chain of transmission will end for the virus and the, we have the greatest chance of stopping this pandemic. Now, what is an emergency use authorization or EUA? So many people um, are dying, are getting ill, going to the ICU because of this coronavirus, no? So it's an emergency. So we have to move faster than usual. No? We have to adjust. And therefore, the many FDAs of uh, different countries no? um, make use of this emergency process called an emergency use authorization. It, it uh, hastens or quickens the process in approving certain vaccines that have good evidence of safety and good evidence of um, efficacy or effectiveness. And they approve it so that they can be given to high-risk groups. Those groups uh, of people no, who have a high risk of dying, who have a high risk of uh, getting ill, um, and getting the bad complications of a coronavirus infection. Now, who will get the vaccines first? Uh, those in the priority list are those, like we mentioned earlier, who are at risk for dying if they get coronavirus di uh, disease, or uh, those who have high risk of uh, getting a bad sort of infection. Okay, So who are these? Number one, and these are the first priority, um, but, but the, the real number one would be, uh, of course, the frontliners, okay? Frontliners in healthcare. Uh, second will be the seniors, no? 60 years old and above. Third will be those who have underlying medical problems like diabetes, high blood pressure, lung disease, heart disease, HIV, those who have cancer, okay? Those are just some examples. And then number four, will be the other frontliners of essential services okay all right so those are just those are the priority groups now of course uh, the last uh, in the first priority would be the indigents no okay our are the poor okay because these are the the people who you know who are crowd who, who are in crowded areas crowded homes and they have higher risk of uh, getting the disease if I am not part of the priority group, how will I get access to the vaccine? We will just have to wait for now, okay? Because uh, there are not enough vaccines for everyone in the whole world right now. Uh, let's allow our um, uh, high risk and vulnerable uh, members of our community to get the vaccines first. Eventually, if we line up properly, we will get um, the vaccines as well in the near future. But let's first consider 
the ones who have high risk of dying and getting getting really sick from this uh, this vaccine, and um, let's let them go ahead. Okay. So we mentioned Bayanihan in the past. No, this is the best time to show our Bayanihan. Let uh, the ones who are in danger get the vaccine first. Next question is. Can I purchase the vaccine from private clinics or pharmacies? The answer is no, no, we cannot. No? Uh, we mentioned the emergency use authorization. Um, it is not equal to a certificate of product registration. Um, in, that means it cannot be sold yet uh, for the general public because the, the fast tracking of the, the authorization uh, takes into account that we should uh, vaccinate first the high priority groups. Let us show uh, everyone, uh, ourselves, and even uh, the international um, arena that we Filipinos can, uh, can be patient and can prioritize and help those, especially those who uh, have a high risk of dying from and getting into the ICU uh, with this COVID-19. Lastly, what can we do while waiting to be vaccinated? Definitely, we are doing a good job. We've been wearing our face masks properly, covering the nose, okay? Um, we've been doing our physical distancing, um, not going into crowded areas um, if we can avoid it, okay? And uh, basically, those are the standard minimum health precautions that we can do, including hand washing. Let us not forget to continue washing our hands, especially before we touch our eyes, our nose, our mouth. All of those combined will um, keep us safe while waiting for the coronavirus um, vaccines that are coming. They are coming. And let me end by uh, saying, you know, uh, we have survived so far. Of course, there's, there, are, there are some we have lost along the way. Okay, but we have survived so far with, like I said, with all our precautions. Let us continue to do all those precautions. Um, and there was a, there's, there are uh, famous Filipinos who have said, hold on, just keep on holding on. It may not be for long. Let's keep on holding on until the COVID-19 vaccines arrive for everyone. Thank you again for watching. I am Dr. Joseph Adrian Buensalido. Stay safe, everyone, and don't forget to get vaccinated. It is our best chance to end this pandemic.